What's up? We're doing a quick tutorial on Ader. You want to go to Ader.chat and here they've just updated this to really nicely show all the documentation. To set it up, go to the installation and it's just one pip install to set up Ader chat. Then you can export your OpenAI API. By default, Ader runs with GPT-4.0, but you can also run it with pretty much any other model you want. Check out the connecting to LLMs tab and see the instructions for any other model you want to run. GPT-4.0 is normally the best, so that's what I recommend recommend you using. There are some situations where Opus can do some of the tasks that GPT-40 can't do, so it could be worth trying Opus if GPT-40 fails. One of the biggest issues with Opus and GPT-40 is they're quite costly, so you can actually use the Gemini API for free. They have a rate limited free tier, so your flow could be, if you're short on money, to try Gemini. Um, and if that's not working for you, then try GPT-40. That could also be a viable solution. You can also use um, local language models, but they aren't very effective at this at the moment. Ader has their own LLM leaderboards for which LLMs work great with Ader. Check it out. To use it, it's as easy as running Ader in the directory where you want to edit code. You specify which files to load in the context, but it also reads in stuff like your commit history and your whole repo map. So it knows references to other files, but the ones you specify in the command is what it focuses on. It let's Ader see their contents and edit them for you. Some tips is not to add everything to the chat, just what you think will need to be edited. This will help the LLM focus. Um, it also, as I said, still sends in a map of your entire repository, so it still will know about the other relevant parts. You can get Ada to help you debug by using the slash run command or just pasting errors in the chat and let Ada figure out and fix the bug. You can also use slash test to run tests and help Ada debug tests. You can also send long multi-line messages, which is pretty useful to send really specific prompts. They have a voice command, so you don't have to type your prompts. You can do slash voice and just talk to it. You can also run it in your browser if that's what you prefer. If you go down into the options reference, you can see all the things you can change. Two of the ones that I like is, is having dark mode enabled. I also turn off auto commits. By default, Ader will commit every change it makes to Git. Um, but I like to have conversations going back and forth around the same subject and then commit myself, which you can get Ada to commit with a message itself with the slash commit command. Um, I'd also recommend setting up a config file, which you can put in your home directory with .ada.conf.yaml or just at the root of the Git repository, which you're working out of. And here you can specify all the configuration flags one time so you don't have to keep sending it. Another useful setting is this dry run setting or command where you can get either to tell you what files it would change without actually modifying any of the files. Um, this can be useful to kind of brainstorm how you want to prompt it and make sure that it will edit the files the way you want it. So yeah, we are going to be trying to get Ader to change these files for me. Cool, we have these files. We are editing a Chrome extension. This Chrome extension, it's called Clickless Cage. Um, you type anything you want into it and it'll surf the web, click buttons, and perform actions for you to do complete your goal that you've set it. Uh, we're just trying to implement this export logs functionality here. Use the Chrome file API to gather logs that can be exported as a JSON file every time an LLM call is made. I actually said get it to ask some clarifying questions. Maybe we should do that. Ask three clarifying questions to help you make better <laughs> decisions before editing code. Let's see. Click, click. It's like okay, to ensure I make the best decision, so we've got it to ask some clarifying questions. Where would you like the logs to be stored temporarily before storing them as a JSON? Should we store in memory? In memory is fine. What do you want to uh, include in the content? That's a great question. To the messages payload. And then three, how would you like to trigger the export of the logs? Should it be done manually with production? Yeah, so this is a big important one. Manually trigger export through extensions UI. Oh, automatically at certain intervals would be cool, but I think since it opens a download like pop-up, it's a bit annoying. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, there we go. Now it's making its changes. 
It's added the global variable to store logs in LLM utils, just like I would have expected. Um, in the pop.js, they have an export logs function. And uh, yeah, it actually looks really great. Let's edit, allow the edits, applied the edit. Um, wow, do you reckon that worked? We will find out. That was really great. That was like pretty perfect. Um, shout out to Ader. Let's see if that worked though. Um, failed to parse source because you're invalid jsx this actually looks wrong so it only changed two files so it shouldn't be too hard looks like it added these imports at the end i don't know if we can do that so i'm just going to put them up the top okay um i i don't know if that'll fix it i have a feeling it won't let's have a look okay yep it wasn't that one the issue is in llm util js let's see if we can figure it out just by looking here Yes, it's probably this, line 75. Uh, so I need to get it to refactor it. Let's see if it works, so, okay. So it actually didn't do it perfectly as I thought. There was actually a lot more that needed to be done. So when I say feedback, you only changed one of the SDK calls. There are actually several more similar functions that use the SDK. Make a generic wrapper and apply it to all of them so it can log messages every time open AI SDK is called. All right, let's see, can it do this? I think we're making progress. I probably still need to do some manual changing, but it's definitely like saved me a bunch of time, I think. Let's have a look. That's looking good. It looks like it's running, let's see. Go to YouTube. Yes, excellent. Um, now let's see if the export logs work. Export logs. Yes. No, almost. Almost works. I think that's one thing, like the most annoying thing about software development, and it's also something that um, these agents aren't very good at, is like debugging stuff that it's not just a simple error message. It's like more complex debugging, that's like, that's the most cool thing we should work on. The logs are always downloading as an empty array. I think there is an issue with storing them in a JavaScript files and calling it from the React pop-up. What do you think about this? And what steps can we take to make sure logs are saved in the best way. <laughs> okay, throwing logs in JavaScript file and ex accessing it from React can indeed lead to issues, especially with state management. Correctly to do this, let's use chrome.storage, so it persists. And then it went ahead and changed everything. Didn't even ask me if I wanted to apply the changes, but um, yeah, I don't know. Let's let's see if it works. I guess we didn't really have a choice. <laughs> uh, let's say go to Reddit. Sweet, went to Reddit. Did it save logs? Maybe we need to wait as well. Now the button isn't even working. Uh, logs is not defined in LLM utils. Export logs. Okay, let's just give it the error. Error. It didn't understand. Um, fix this. Uh, all right, let's keep trying this. Go to Reddit. Just go to Reddit. Export logs. Yes, we actually exported logs. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, guys, we got logs. I'm going to just keep talking to uh, Ada. We're going to make some more changes. Add another button to clear the logs in Chrome storage. Let's see. Now we should have clear logs and and um and export logs yes 